The answer to the question is 20 different professionals can work on one single architectural project. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me. On this channel, we talk about architecture and technology. So if that's something that interests you, make sure you smash that subscribe button and let's get on with today's video. Today, we're talking about how many professionals it takes to design one single home. Now, we're gonna be talking about a very complex home here, potentially a very luxury residential home. This isn't your standard run of the mill home. You don't need this many consultants for something that's a little bit easier. However, if you do have a very complex home or a very complex project, more than likely most, if not all of these people will be involved throughout the project in some way, shape or form. So most of the time, the project starts through the architect, which is your first consultant. The architect is the one that draws up the plans, navigates the minefield that is the construction industry and helps you get your project off the ground. The second consultant that we engage straight off the bat is a land surveyor. They go out to your site, measure up the site in full 3D usually, so we know exactly where all the levels and how the land works. After the land surveyor comes the geotechnical consultant. The geotechnical consultant will go out on site, drill a couple boreholes and test the ground. They will come out and tell you what soil type is active on that piece of land. It is very important that we understand the soil type so the engineers can design around this soil type. So for example, if you come back with a class P site, straight away you know that's a problem site, it's gonna be reactive, the earth's gonna move and shift, so the engineers have to design accordingly. This is a critical step, even though it seems so insignificant. As we continue designing, usually we finish one or two sketch designs before we start engaging the heavier consultants. These other consultants start coming into the project a little bit later on, but they do definitely come in in waves. If it is a complex project and a complex home that has a minefield of planning services to get around, potentially, not necessarily, you'll be engaging a planning consultant to help get you through all those planning conditions that might make this house otherwise impossible. And if for one reason or another, the house is actually an extension to a heritage home, well then, not many architects specialize in heritage. So it is always recommended that a heritage consultant be brought on board when any heritage home is involved. So straight away, before we've even started documentation, we have so many consultants to list. So once we start getting into the construction drawing side of things, this is where even more consultants come on board. This is where a predominant amount of the engineers come on board. So the engineers usually come on board in order. We have your structural engineer who deals with all your structural members of the house, your roof trusses, your steel columns, your footings, for example. Second, we have your hydraulic engineer. The hydraulic engineer usually deals with all the plumbing fixtures on the property. Thirdly, we have our mechanical engineer. Contrary to popular belief, the mechanical engineer doesn't just work on cars, that isn't their job role. A mechanical engineer works on air conditioning and air conditioning spaces. Typically speaking, they do a lot more than just air conditioning, but in a house, they predominantly focus on the air conditioning and ventilation systems. Fourth, we have our civil engineer. Imagine if your site was cut into the side of a cliff. You wanna make sure that cliff isn't just gonna fall away one day. So the civil engineer's job is to be able to ensure all the grades are correct, the site's gonna be able to hold up, that the drainage works properly and there's gonna be no movement in that ground. Next, we might have our acoustic engineers and our fire engineers. So if you wanna make sure that your house is acoustically perfect and that you aren't having noise transfer between one slab and another or one room and another for whatever reason, say you have a YouTube studio and you're doing phenomenally well, that you want that room to be perfect, well, then an acoustic engineer has to come on board and help with this process. The fire engineer, on the other hand, deals with, well, everything fire related. Any sprinkler systems that you might need, any pumps and tanks you might need, how the firefighters are actually gonna be able to come to your property and tackle a fire if there is one. Neither of these consultants are required on every job, but they are an optional extra. Now, that's about it from the engineers, and this is usually where we also engage our National Construction Code Consultant, or our NCC Consultant for short. 
because the NCC is a couple thousand pages long. It is specifically somebody's job to know exactly what is going on in that document and to guide everybody in every single different profession on that book. So the NCC consultant will guide us as architects, will guide the engineers, will guide almost everybody to be able to assist and make sure it complies with the National Construction Code in Australia. Now, I'm sure that around the world, we all have different standards or different terms for this, but there is more than likely going to be an NCC consultant in your area that's able to help with this project. Now in Australia, another consultant that you won't be able to get a building permit without is an energy efficiency consultant. The energy efficiency consultant's role is to take all the information from all the other consultants and consolidate that into an energy report. How much energy is that house theoretically using and how many stars does it achieve in a green star rating? So for example, coming up in Western Australia very shortly, depending on when you're watching this video, all new homes must comply with six star energy efficiency. So that usually means double glazed windows, no penetrations in the ceiling or minimal at least, and many other elements that usually didn't have to be accommodated to. So this is our way of trying to reduce the global impact of energy consumption and making these houses more solar passive and self-sustainable. In my personal opinion, as difficult as this is to design in some climates, and as unachievable as it is in others, it is definitely a good move forward for the architecture industry. <sighs> now there's so many consultants, I'm starting to run out of breath. But if you had a multi-level luxury home that you had to run up and down the stairs all day, every day, you'd probably start running out of breath too. So most of the time we place a lift into these designs, which means a lift consultant must be brought onto the project. And if you're gonna be spending that money on a lift, it means you're also gonna be spending some money on interior design. That means we're more than likely gonna bring in an interior architect to help with that element. But we can't forget about the outside. The outside requires some very detailed design and it requires an expert that knows what they're talking about. So a landscape architect is usually brought in to help make every garden absolutely perfect. But what if there's a tree right in the middle of the property that is potentially causing a threat or another tree that is dying but is also potentially a heritage listed tree? What happens in these situations? Well then we can also bring in an arborist. Now for a long time, I didn't know what an arborist was, but basically the easiest definition of an arborist is a tree surgeon. They'll come in, inspect the tree, make sure it is alive and healthy, and advise how it can be maintained or cut down in the appropriate circumstances. So an arborist and a landscaper will potentially be working on this job as well. And finally, if you're building this beautiful dream home and spending all this money on consultants, you don't want to be screwed by the builder with a hefty price. So most of the time with projects that are large and very significant in monetary value, we bring in a quantity surveyor. The quantity surveyor's role is basically to analyze every element of that project and be able to quantify how much things are worth. So when a builder comes in with a quote and says this house is going to cost $10 million, the quantity surveyor has facts and figures to back up this and cross check every single element. So a quantity surveyor's fee is worth their weight in gold, especially on larger projects. Now, just so I haven't missed any and you guys don't go commenting down, David, that was only 19. Quick recap for you all. One, architect. Two, geotechnical. Three, structural. Four, electrical. Five, hydraulic. Six, NCC consultant. Seven, surveyor. 8 mechanical, 9 acoustic, 10 fire, 11 energy efficiency, 12 lift consultant, 13 landscape architect, 14 interior architect, 15 access consultant, I did miss one, 16 arborist, 17 quantity surveyor, 18 planning consultant, 19 civil engineer and 20 heritage consultant. The one I missed is the access consultant and the reason I missed this one is because the access consultant is very rare and the access consultant is the one that is usually brought on for larger commercial projects, not so much residential homes. However, if you do have some sort of disability or any sort of access requirements in that home, the access consultant is able to provide full documentation on how this home can be utilized to the best of your abilities. And that is all the consultants listed as they usually appear in a project. 
There are many, many, many more consultants that can be engaged in an architectural project. However, these are just some of the consultants I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. It is very rare that all of these consultants will be engaged on one single project, but at least 65 to 75% of these consultants will be engaged on these larger projects. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a lot of information out of it. I know there was a lot of information, but if you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And because this video forms one of my 28 videos in 28 days for February of 2021, usually it would be see you next Monday. However, because it is February, I will see you tomorrow.